guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Monday, April 8th. Um, day after the Celtics took down the Portland Trailblazers zone of recording. If you'd like to hear our thoughts on that game, make sure to go check it out uh, on the channel right now. You can see it. Peyton Pritchard's in thumbnail with Delano Ben. You can go click on it. It's right there. I believe it was episode 463. Uh, if you're listening on, on podcast platforms, that's insane. You know, every time I go to type in like our uh, our um, <clears throat> the episode number on uh, Megaphone, which is where we upload our podcast, I'm like, holy shit, we've done so many of these episodes and that's not even counting the like individual videos we do uh, on the other days of the week we we put in the work we that put we in do. the work i may have just tweeted something that was misinformed so i had to delete it quick sorry oh I was so like, uh, what's happening? <laughs> there's the video of uh john calipari walking his dog and they like blitz him the media yes. and yeah. andrew doxy quoted said y'all don't find this thing weird like you don't feel any kind of shame and I replied and I was like, um, blitzing him while he's out walking his dog or the dog stroller, but he actually has a kid in the stroller and the dog is behind him. <laughs> you know what was funny? I saw that video like as I was getting in the car, but I also thought yeah. it was a dog stroller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you don't see the dog till like the very end of it. I was like, Oh, wait, what? He has a dog stroller? Like what yeah. a freak. I also thought it was a dog stroller. I just saw it your notification of my thing. Um <laughs> A reminder is always you can have, you'll have it forever, but you'll never see the extra tweet. <laughs> reminder is always make sure to leave a like on the video if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe to the How About Them Celtics YouTube channel. Uh, if you're on CLNS listening to us right now, jump on over to How About Them Celtics, leave us a subscribe there. We'd appreciate it very much. We're growing our own channel as well, and you get extra content, plenty of live streams, plenty of extra videos. Uh, if you're listening on audio platforms, Spotify and Apple uh, or anything else you listen on, make sure to leave us five stars and leave us a review and follow the show there. You can follow on Spotify. You can follow on Apple podcasts. We'd appreciate it very much. Uh, anyways, first thing we're talking about today is the title of the video, the title of the podcast. Christoph Porzingis helped the Celtics make history, um, which is true. It's a factual statement that we happen to make the title of the podcast. Um, it's also just playing of... clickbait to my dad today. Really? How, how so? And well, not, not, not so much that he didn't know what it was, but I was like, he was like talking about stuff he sees on Facebook. And I yeah. was like, yeah, like the reason why it's all like phrased like that is so you get more curious. <laughs> but yeah. We yeah. sort of clickbaited, but not really. Cause we're going to deliver. We always I... deliver. But... Gotcha. <laughs> Got your ass basically. Get <laughs> fucked. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> If we clickbaited you, we probably did them a favor. Like you got yeah. the door shut. You might not have found it. Welcome in. Um, this is it. I'll pull it up here. Uh, pull it up. Christoph Strzingis, player of excuse me, of the week. I was about to say of the month. Uh four and oh, the Celtics. Uh in that span, he's averaged nineteen point eight points, ten point oh rebounds, three point oh blocks. Um, it doesn't list the splits here, but in his last four games, Christoph Sprzingis is shooting Holy shit. <laughs> I didn't realize how good the splits were. I'm just looking this up on the fly. Uh, Christoph Zerzingis uh, is shooting 66% from the field and 64% from three. Let's go. He's back. Week. And best, best part on 10 shots a game and three threes a game. <laughs> he's just like doing it so efficiently. Um, but yeah, he's killing it. Also, 1.5 steals a game. So he's also just the defense has been insane for Porzingis. I know Jay King wrote something similar to that uh, or something to that effect for the athletic today. So go check out his piece there. Uh, Jay's a beast. Friend of the show. Old friend of the show. But we'll get him back soon. He's um, your friend, not my friend. He's never been friends well, with he, me on the show. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's right. Live stream. Yeah. He was he was on the Jeopardy. And uh, that was the day I was talking about the girl from the coffee shop that I used to know from work. But we didn't <laughs> yes. say anything to each other. And it turns out she just didn't recognize me, which is mm -hmm. fair. <clears throat> it's tough. Um, but the real interesting part and the reason you got not clickbaited, but clickable title, we'll call it, is Porzingis mm -hmm. helped the Celtics make history. Celtics are the first team ever in NBA history to have four different players win player of the week within the same season. Tatum did it the week of November 6th. Jalen Brown did it March 4th. Derek White did it March 25th. Chris Stops did it April 8th. Notice him. March, March, April. Pretty good second half of the season for the Celtics. Pretty good entire season for the Celtics. I feel like but... Tatum also got one after <laughs> the All-Star break, maybe? Perhaps. Let me take a look. NBA I feel like he got more than one. Uh, I could be wrong. But while you look, 
I feel like they can definitely get to five. I know this is the last week of the season, but Peyton Pritchard is ready if needed. And he's going to be needed mm-hmm. because they're going to be sitting guys. He's going to have plenty of extra run. And he's played really, really well lately, which we're going to get to later in the show. And uh, he has absolutely an opportunity to make it five Celtics who have won player of the week this season. Tatum only won once, just November He's 6th. a bum. That's that why. is crazy. You know what's even crazier? He won November 6th, 2023, but he didn't. And that was the first time he had won since October 2022. That's like very weird. To is think there about. voter fatigue with player of the week? <clears throat> I guess so. I'm trying. I'm like looking through here, like trying to see like who the weirdest name is, is to have one player of the week. Um, I don't see it. Bobby Portis is crazy. That, that's a fun one. Just like Derek White, I suppose. But uh, yeah, I'm just like looking through. That is a good name. <clears throat> Jalen Green, but he deserved it. Yeah. I'd say Portis is the weirdest one, but hmm. yeah, Porzingis helped him make history. Dude, Porzingis, like you've seen it too. Like you've seen the uptick in production for Porzingis, especially on the defensive end. I know we talked about like the Porzingis block party Man, a couple of pods ago, but he, dude, he's had five blocks in like each of the past seven games. It feels like he's just Good blocking everything lately. Um, on About a, time well, he stepped up. I will say we didn't even talk about this in the pod last night <laughs> because like everything going on, but like, yeah, of course he had five blocks because they had fucking 90 offensive rebounds. I think I said, no, oh, maybe, maybe I didn't say offensive rebounds. I think I was just having too much fun. Yeah. We just fucked around the whole show. I thought about offensive rebounds, but I think I lost it by the time it was my turn to talk. Yeah, dude. But, um, like I said, Jay King wrote an article on Porzingis today, um, talking about, how oh, he hasn't been back to the playoffs in a few years, how he's using this time to ramp up for the postseason. Um, and it's, it's, it really is. He's getting his like, playoff reps against the Portland Trailblazers. <laughs> well, yeah, but like, it's funny because like he genuinely just hasn't made the playoffs since, yes, like for two years, right? Or three years, two years. Yeah, two straight years, no playoffs. Yeah, because he got traded to Washington. <clears throat> and realistically, like, man doesn't have much playoff experience he's played in 10 total playoff games the last playoff game he played in was excuse me was a seven game series dallas lost in 2021 to the clippers like it's been three years since this man has played in the playoffs so he genuinely needs to get ramping up into shape and it is Mm. very very fun to watch him do it against these just to be frank dog shit teams sorry kings uh so porzingis Porzingis was somebody, Jack, we we had been doing a ton of playbacks on this road trip yes. that, uh, you know, came to a close last week. I am so happy he's making threes again because on the road trip, I was like, man, these have to start going in. He, he had lost my I think it's going in faith. I don't I didn't have that for him for a little bit. I was like, OK, maybe this will go in. But now he's back. Just absolute laser thrown in line drives from the logo like it's nobody's business off of pick and pops. He looks so confident. His jump shot is effortless because it's not really a jump shot, so he doesn't have to elevate. He just lifts the ball up, flicks it in, plays nerf ball from the three-point line. And if he's able to be on in the playoffs, it's going to bring the Celtics to a whole new level. He's really been an X-factor type guy for them all season, so to have him hitting his stride before the playoffs, as funny as it may sound that he's doing it against the Blazers or the Kings or uh, dog shit teams like the Bucs, you know, it's important. It's, it's an important thing. It's an important piece of the puzzle. He's going to be a big part of Banner 18 if it, if it shows up this year. I sure hope it does. The Nerf hoop basketball is so fun. Because you the best part about the Nerf hoop ball is that you can see it coming from a mile away. Like, you'll see them run a pick and roll, or, or just you'll see them screen for somebody. You'll see the Blazers. The Blazers were the biggest morons with this they were switching everything and you'd think after the fucking fifth switch they'd realize hmm maybe we shouldn't just allow horford and porzingis to post up our guards at the free throw line and murder us because they did it with horford once early in the game and all horford did was swing it to the corner swung it again drew holiday pump faked and drove on scoot and got an easy bucket like guys i'm sorry respectfully part of it is obviously the celtics are good and have a lot of talent but maybe just like don't switch it. Like maybe, maybe fucking try something different. There was another play, and I didn't put this in my three things you might have missed. Um, but I'll pull it up here. It wasn't even Porzingis. I'm just going down the rabbit hole of like holy shit, bad defense. Um, if I can find my little fucking notebook, um, your little manifesto. Yeah, my little <clears throat> something book. Uh, little black book. This side of it. Yes, exactly. Um, 
I wrote in here, the exact thing is Holiday miss, misses a three at 8.45. Bad scoot D. <laughs> so let me let me pull up this, this bad scoot D for you. Just like as a testament to how baffling the Trailblazers defense was uh, in this game against the Celtics, which they ended up losing 124-107. Um, <clears throat> let me find it. So it was a true holiday miss three. It was his only miss three, so it should be easy to find. Um, the Celtics are like about to run a pick and roll. Uh, or they're just Horford's about to set a screen. Um, this isn't it. I, I, I would have to find it. I can't find it. Basically what happens is they go to set a screen. Um, <laughs> and in anticipation of the screen, Scoot like starts to nudge over and just leaves the baseline butt naked. Like, I'm like, yeah, come, come drive this way. <laughs> come hang out. And so holiday drives, they draw two. And then whoever is at three point lunch gets like, wide open like it, it was just the most baffling defense i've ever seen he was like waiting for a switch waiting to like go into the screen and just all i was like okay i'll go this way then like it is it made no sense but the, the nerf hoop for porzingis is, is all-time stuff the man is just it's free dude it, it, it's free and it's crazy to see like i think you saw flashes of this last year when the Celtics lost to the Wizards like you could see like oh yeah this guy's effective but then you put him around like guys who were just also nasty and you're like this fucking I was cheap. rattled last year when he did it to them, dude. I mean, I'm still rattled, but I used it when I wrote my article last week about this year's team being different. That was the game. I was like, that game fucking sucked, and I still hold it yep. against them. It was Porzingis giving them 30 in a game after they were like, we want the one seed. He, he is a cheat code, and as we get closer to the playoffs, the decision-making from him when he gets the catch at the high post is going to be even more important. I, I don't know if that's part of the J. King article I haven't had a chance to look at. I don't know why all of a sudden the athletic is out of my rotation as I put this sheet together. It should not be. They do good work there, and they give you good topics to talk about. But if he's able to make decisions like Jokic, at least at like 45 50% of the capacity, the seller's going to be real dangerous because the amount of attention he requires anytime he touches the ball there is unreal just of how easy it is for him to turn and shoot defenses have to go into a little bit of a panic if he manages to get the ball guys like holiday Derek white tatum even i mean all the all the players i'm, I'm not really going to exclude anybody is going to benefit because of the extra attention he's going to get it's perfect it's perfect for this team it's a new layer they can use if the offense gets stale there's no reason that they shouldn't go to it anytime they need a bucket mm-hmm Porzingis rocks. He, he's a cheat code. He's a beast. Uh, next think, thing we got. Oh, sorry. Yep. I, I, no, I don't want to uh, hold it up too much. Do you think that there's going to be a moment where the Porzingis thing is your best bucket option in, in a clutch game? Do you think it already is? Um, no. No. I don't Why think not? so. I'm not chat. I I'm just curious. I don't what think the thought you'll get. Is. Like I talk about how the Blazers like switched everything, so we always had a smaller guy in them. I don't think they'll let that happen late in the games. Like I, I always think they will switch it or they will hold firm and like go through screens. Um, yep. And I just think the way defenses defend at the end of the games is they pack the paint and they're like more willing to give up mid range shots. And it depends on the situation. Like if you're down, if you're up three, obviously you're going to guard the three point line a lot heavier. But like if it's a one point game with ten seconds left, your best defense is guard the paint at all costs and close out on shooters as quick as you can out of that. And like you saw the Nuggets do it, like Jokic was just dropping back in the paint and every time Porzingis got a post-up option, um, or I mean the reverse, like Porzingis or Jokic was just posting him up down there. And so you'll see a lot more pressure, I think, in those spots in the late game scenarios, which is why I think you see um, a lot of teams settle for these mid-range looks that we've come to hate Tatum for is because like genuinely that is like, as weird as it sounds, that is oftentimes the most open you're going to get like weirdly enough um there's uh, like there are other options than there are better things like we we all praise that jalen brown mid-range shot because they did something different than he made against the hawks but like that's the same fucking shot tatum gets like that is almost exactly it's just different because the ball moved a little bit like like that is the, he was contested it was a contested mid-range jumper and we treated it different and i i agree with the like sentiment that like they tried something different so it's good but at the end of the day like he just fucking made it. It was just a contested bitter and shubber. He just made it. Like that's it's the only difference. Mm. And so I think realistically, like as much as it sucks, and I do agree that they should try other things to try to get open in other ways. 
the end of the day, a lot of the times you're just going to get a mid range shot. Like that's just kind of what happens. Um, teams guard the three. If it's a three point game teams clog the paint because they don't want you to get layups like obviously. And so sometimes you're just ended up uh, with that. And so I do think maybe from the perspective of like, would you rather Porzingis take a mid range than Tatum? Maybe, but I also think there's a thing to it where Porzingis is going to have a lot of taller defenders on him and the spots that Porzingis gets to, it's pretty easy to like send help over from like the wings. I don't know. I, I, I do think, I don't think it'd be a bad look at the end of games by any means, but like the best, I just think it'll be easier to guard. Then. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know. I wasn't, I wanted I wasn't to your, your is, but... more uh, X's and O's thoughts on it because me, oh, I'm like tall guy that. getting ball. Good. I think it is good. I just don't know if it's always going to be as open as it is throughout the course of a game in that spot. Sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. I could I mean, be wrong. That makes sense. I very well be wrong. <clears throat> we'll see. I hope they I hope they try it out. Now not... that you were right on Pritchard, I have to trust you. <laughs> this is true. I mean, let's not act like that was a hot take. Let's not act like I went on a limb there. Let's just call it what it was. Chat was being stupid. Respectfully. Like, come on. That was so stupid. <laughs> Anyways, um Prize Picks is America's number one sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get out of the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings rolled in. Now get in on the playoff action. Win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 in just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play. You can make a pick and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. This week on Prize Picks, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and for his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit matchup to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prize Picks. Jalen Brown time. Jalen Brown scored his 10,000th career points uh, against the Portland Trailblazers. He spoke about it after the game. He talked about reflecting on his journey. Uh, he talked about how cool it is, et cetera, et cetera. He comes the 15th Celtic ever to reach that mark, which is kind of less than I thought uh, for how good this other organization is. Then you step back and you realize right. 10,000 points is a lot of points. That's just, that's just genuinely a lot of points to score in a Celtics uniform. Um, but yeah, good for Jalen Brown. 10K. W, w Jalen. I asked Bobby this on the show this morning. Favorite Jalen point what's your favorite <clears throat> that's a good question um probably uh the jazz buzzer beater or no the rockets one the rockets one that i like the rockets one better they lost that game you said point not result and i like i know one. i like the way you got it. it was an interesting switch to me that's why i i called it out <clears throat> my mine is also in a loss the dunk the kg dunk where he daps up kg is probably the coolest one Mm. That or uh, I like the dunk in game five against the Heat where he just takes the entire energy from mm. the. Are we counting the playoffs? Yeah. We count playoffs. Well, because they don't they count. count points. Points. They don't? No. That shit's stupid. <laughs> of course they don't. <laughs> We're yeah, talking about milestones. Why would they count playoffs? Like, the, no, nothing. They're still playing games. Playoffs. I know, but like LeBron's 40K is not playoffs. No one's 40K. Why do like, they no not point. count playoffs? It's so stupid. I don't know. Just so they can keep everybody for those records and an even playing field and then have playoffs different. Ones. Maybe if you didn't suck, you would be on the same playing field. Plain and simple. That's, that's not completely yeah. fair. Mm. Um, Yeah, good for Jalen. Anyways, next thing. Uh, speaking of playoffs, the main Celtics making a playoff run. They have won oh, yes. two playoff games in a row. They are now going to the G League finals uh, to take on the, I believe they're taking on the Oklahoma, Oklahoma City Blue. <laughs> yes, sir. Um. Sam, name me one player on the Oklahoma City Blue roster. Uh, <laughs> I can't name one either. Actually, let me you try. You can't? Uh, I'm going to try it as well. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of a two-way player. It like, goes down there. They don't have Justin Jackson on that team? <clears throat> no, I think he's on the Dallas. But maybe they also the Blue? No, they're the Texas Legends. Yeah, they wear blue. <clears throat> That's not the same thing. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Do I know anybody? Uh... Fla uh, something flangers, I think he came out of. Bay I got no idea. Adam fl flanges flankers. Only oh, no. Let me let me see if I was correct. Uh, Adam Flagler. 
Yes, that was correct. All right. Uh, Usman Diang is a name you should know. Or no, sorry, not well, him, but yes. But Keontae Johnson. Do you want to know why you know Keontae Johnson? Because he, when he was on, what team was he on when it happened? Florida, I believe. He collapsed. You remember that? A couple years ago when the players collapsed on the floor? No. And then CAA, well, he, he collapsed and he's back and now he's in the NC and now he's in here. Good for him. Good for him. Good for uh, him. But yeah, the main, <laughs> main Celtics are taking on the blue. Um, two big games on the run. Uh, they won um, in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Long Island Nets. Uh, or, yes, against the Long Island Nets. I couldn't remember if he played them or the Blue Coats. Uh, Nimi had 16 and 19 rebounds. Walsh had 15 and 7. JD Davis in 19 and 11. DJ Stewart, 29 points, including 19 in the fourth. And they ballooned that lead in the fourth. It was a close game, and they just fucking blew them out of the water like the real Celtics. So good for Maine. W Maine. Uh, a lot of fun things from that game to me. I thought the act from the expo was pretty cool. Crowd gave him some good juice in that game. I thought Nimi looked like an absolute hoss when I watched back the highlights today. Bobby put it best on talking C's. He said he looks like he's playing against a JV team as a varsity player. And it's true. Everything that Nimi did, at least on the mixtape, and he was eight of nine from the field. So I don't think he was doing a whole lot that wasn't working. Looked incredibly easy. He was just dunking over everybody. He was able to be patient underneath and the defense was getting all out of whack. He had that sick block that you just showed. He even made a long two with his foot on the line at the end of the game. Dagger. A little, little love for the Nimi jump shot hope. Shout out Portugal. He's got a like good jump shot form. I'm not saying he should take him, but he, he's got good form, which is something. <clears throat> right? I still can't wrap my head around that Luke Cornett's just not taking threes. I hate it. I want to just take, just take like I actually three. I was thinking back to the the shit post article I did, and I was like, I really should just put like Luke Cornett shoots threes as one of the <laughs> mm-hmm. things. You should because I legitimately don't hate threes. it. No, I think you should. Jake Eisenberg just head and hands pulling his hair out. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Good for Walsh me. Man. Also, he had some big buckets in this game too. He made it three. He had a steal and a fast break dunk. He had an and one at the end of the game. Like he looked pretty good in the fourth quarter. It was an encouraging game for Walsh. I like the way he's able to kind of rise up in the intense moments. His defense makes him somebody that is going to be playable down the stretch of games. And I think this uh, bodes well for the future of him. Like he, I RJ said it in the the stream today. He was like, "Well, getting." reps in an intense atmosphere is going to be worth it regardless so good for these guys i think jordan walsh not next season but the season after is playing like luke cornett minutes not like his minutes exactly one-to-one center but like that level of like 10 to 15 minutes a game you know what i'm saying like that that many minutes yeah like how many many minutes does luke get luke is averaging 15 minutes a night yeah i think i think that's around where walsh is slash should be um, he's only 19. Yeah. So he'll be 21 at that point. Before. So we'll see. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, good for Maine Celtics. W. I know you are, disagree and think they should have lost, but good for them. Yeah, they really fucked the big boys over because now they have to go to Milwaukee tomorrow. And they no don't big have guys. bodies to throw out there. No big men. You see the injury report? Horford, they Porzingis, both questionable. Both questionable. I think they should sit both of them. I said that's what I was going to say. My I'm not putting you. either one of those guys out there for Giannis to play football with. Not yet. You got to earn that, Giannis. You want to you want to play football against our guys? You better make it to the conference finals. Uh, yeah. Hopefully the Celtics will be there. To, to me, doubling me. back to JB really quick. Mm. When uh, when Gage Dushan posts an edit to Celtics, you watch it, and so we're gonna watch it. Uh, Gage is the Celtics elite editor who Noah did a yep. profile on for Celtics blog who rocks. Um, and we're going to watch his JB 10 K points at it because I want to. And so you guys all have to, because I control this. Miles. <laughs> so here you go. You Jimmy. know what annoyed me today is I saw somebody like not share the original post, but just like share the video. This like, one. Just, yeah. I was like, just, just give yeah. like credit to the person that made it. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, it's from the Celtics account, so I guess. Yeah, but still, like, give credit yeah. to the Celtics account. They commissioned Gabe to put this together. Like, I agree. Good work. Gage. Respect him. Gage. All right, here we go. That's what I said. <laughs> All right. Jalen, the 10,000 point milestone, the individual milestone like that must mean a lot for you. Now, all the fans out there, I'm sure they've heard a lot about you up to this point, but now they want to hear it straight from the source. What is Jalen Brown going to bring to the Boston Celtics? 
take him long to get his first two points as an NBA player. I'm going to go to war for the city. Brown. I'm going to wear my heart on my sleeve. Brown takes it. I'm going to leave it on the floor every night. I love to play basketball, and I know you guys love to watch. So, Brown oh! for three. Let's build this bond. Puts it in. I promise I won't disappoint. You look back on everything. To be honest, it speaks for itself. All I can say is I'm incredibly grateful. Dude, Gage is so sick at his job. That's so that like that's awesome. I watched some of the stuff that he puts out, and I'm just like, I don't know how on earth you know how to do <laughs> you know he that taught on himself? your computer. Yeah, unbelievable. Dude, I think you you guys always say, Jack, you make good backgrounds. <laughs> I'm dog shit. Like I can't do anything. <laughs> what are we doing? I thought about trying to make uh, like the shit post videos I used to make, and I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, I'm washed. I don't have the pay. I actually think my like uh, Adobe subscription, like I got a new card. So it didn't mm -hmm. renew, and I'm like, ah, I'm just not gonna give them money. I don't use yeah. it. Fair enough. Anyway, shout out Gage. Uh, all right, next thing. Peyton Pritchard has been absolutely dominant. He's playing like Devin Booker. Just kind of. Well, let me <clears throat> let me can context. Uh, Sam found this on Reddit. Do you want to intro it? You found it. Or do you want me to talk? Yeah. So uh, Reddit user Z Gamer 200 posted to the Celtic subreddit. He says, or she says, they say. So we all know Pritchard has been on fire of late. But just how on fire has he been? Well, I did some quick math on the subject, and over his last 12 games, Pritchard is averaging 17.4 points per game, 7.3 assists per game, per 36 minutes. For some context, only 13 players in the NBA are averaging 17.7 in per 36, and those players are D'Angelo Russell, Russell Westbrook, Malik Monk, Damian Lillard, Devin Booker, Cade Cunningham, DeMontis Sabonis, LeBron, James Harden, Jokic, Luka, TJ McConnell, and Tyrese Halliburton. Not a bad list of names for Pritchard to be keeping company with as of late. Very good. The, the I was laughing because the first thing I took away from this was I did some quick math and I'm sitting there thinking, please tell me he didn't add up every single average and divided himself. Yeah, I hope not. I hope not because that's not necessary. <laughs> like You, can you ain't got to do that. that. Um, but yeah, 17 and seven per 36 is, is nuts. Um, Pritchard's been really good. And if it feels like we've talked a lot about Pritchard is like, he is defined by, oh, is he shooting the ball? Well, that's how effective he is. But lately it's been, he's getting a lot of run as the primary ball handler. He's had the ball in his hands a lot. And the Celtics have looked really good in those minutes. And I know I'm a broken record. And every time we talk about Pritchard, I say it, the man is on just, such a fucking good contract like they locked that guy up for seven mil a year which is what you pay like 15th men or not 15th men, but like what you pay your like 11th guy veteran you know maybe you'll get minutes maybe he won't and so has got a 26 year old point guard who can shoot the three ball who hustles on defense at the very least tries his ass off and is a great playmaker shoots like this dude does everything this is like a great backup point guard that can play 25 minutes a night for you uh, and start when he needs to because he just fits in because he's good off the ball as well. So credit to Brad for getting the deal done. Um, I guess maybe credit for Joe for just fucking sticking him on the bench for a year and depleting his value. Uh, not really, but yeah, Pritchard rocks, man. He's been so good. Calculated move. Good job by the team. Literally. Uh, Peyton Pritchard is somebody in the playoffs that I've said in the past I can see affecting a game. Now it's not so much of a bold statement to go out there and be like, yeah, I think he could have a good playoff game. In the past, we've seen him show up in the big moments. The the one I always reference, game two against the Nets. Celtics come back from 17 down. Pritchard hits a insane step back long two over Seth Curry to give them a lead in the fourth quarter and then proceeds to make a couple layups down the stretch. And he looked completely unfazed by the moment. Man was not shook at all. Stepped in, did his job. And now that he's given more responsibility, you can even have some sort of like confidence, calmness about you if Derek White or Drew Holiday gets into foul trouble or something, where Pritchard actually has to be out there as a ball handler because he's done an excellent job at putting pressure on the defense, getting in the paint, keeping his dribble alive, and setting up his teammates. The assist numbers are the most insane things. You don't see that off the bench very often. What you see off the bench is this guy's going to come in, give you a couple buckets, and then get back out of the game. 
Peyton Pritchard's coming in and giving, getting buckets, but he's also helping his teammates get some buckets. Who doesn't love that? Yeah, Pritchard's awesome, man. Uh, and I mean, this can bleed right into our, uh, I believe is our last Celtics thing. You found another Reddit post saying, would you like to set the table here? Yeah, so I was scrolling through Reddit the other day, and I meant to reference this on Talking Seas today, and I didn't, so we're going to do it now. And the post reads like this, if it would open for me. I got it. You want me to read it? No, I got it. Uh, Which okay. NBA team would be the best if every team removed their two best players? Which team is most likely to win the chip slash be the best team in the league if you remove their two best players in every team? Somebody the like the top comment is the Cavs. You, you people so are all right. <laughs> are you are you not watching what we're watching? Yeah, not great. Because if um, if you have a team out there, is there any better team than Porzingis, White, and Holiday? If that is your worst of the starting five, if you're not convinced one of those guys isn't better than Tatum or Brown, which I don't know if they are, but I'm sure there are people out there that like they're not. Why they're not. why are Tatum and Brown <laughs> safe? But no, I mean, I don't think any NBA team can match up with the Celtics if, you know, the two stars on the team got Thanos snapped away. Um, Yeah, like going down the line, Bucks, no. Magic, no. Knicks, no. Nobody in the East. Nobody in the East would be close. They they already run the East. Timberwolves, absolutely not. Denver, no. OKC is probably the best, the next best one. I'd say the Clippers are maybe the next best one because at least they'd have, they'd still have a star. Um running the show to some degree mavericks hell no Suns, hell no um <clears throat> pelicans, not bad deal. pelicans could be okay yeah. they wouldn't be great but like they'd be all right lakers no warriors no rockets no <laughs> Loki the jazz would probably be like okay <laughs> it'd still be all right like they wouldn't be terrible um uh, everybody else somebody said spurs welcome to relegation boy. <laughs> yeah. um <clears throat> but yeah dude i mean the better question i think than even this one is we talked about it last night when um, Tatum didn't play, but we can take it a step further with this. Like, if you just took away Tatum and Brown for the Celtics, are they still a playoff team in the S in in the or East? And the better question it. is, trade. <laughs> Shut the fuck yeah. up. Uh, but what if you just like <laughs> Thanos snapped Tatum and Brown, like you said, would that team still make the playoffs in the East? And I, yeah, like yeah. easily. I still think yeah. they might be. A top, I think it'll be a top four team. I still think they'd have home court advantage. Just because you, you got to think of it like this. Okay, you're gonna have Derek White, Drew Holiday, still probably the best defensive backcourt in the league. Instead of having Brown and Tatum as your wing, you're gonna have Hauser who can set into a. Even though he sucks as a starter, he's terrible as a starter. He'd get used to it. He he can still step into a role where he's just out there expected to shoot. Then you can take your pick of who's gonna be on the floor next to to Porzingis, whether you want to be Horford or somebody else. Yeah, you're you're still going to have plenty of options. Then you still have Cornette and Pritchard coming off your bench, so your top seven is still looking pretty strong. Cornette, Pritchard, Tillman, O'Shea, Svi <clears throat> off the bench still. Svi actually has been playing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You give him more minutes. I think he'd be fine. like that's still like that team isn't as good as the Bucks. That team's not as good as the Magic Knicks Cavs. Might be as good as the Magic Knicks and Caps. Like I think they'd just be in that range. That's probably where they'd fall. in the box. Yeah, perhaps. Would the Celtics still be the one seed? <laughs> like that sounds crazy to say, but new they video today will dropped. They do have a f- fifteen game lead on the Eastern Conference, which is fucking insane to say out loud. They are .05 percentage points away from an 800 win percentage nobody else in the nba has a 70 percent win percentage like they are <clears throat> running away with the entire league they have a eight game lead on the the nba it's ridiculous that's insane i would hate i would hate to be competing against the celtics plain and simple that is nuts dude my god the celtics have won more road games than six nba teams have won games <laughs> like, what the fuck are we doing like that's fucking insane anyways uh, shout out to Celtics and shout out, that's crazy right like that's insane like, when you think about that um anyways let's uh oh going over to final the- Celtics thing quick mm. Rob said no tribute video for me please yeah he said no no doesn't want to why do you, what do you uh I saw somebody talk about this on Twitter I forget who it was if it was you in the comments just tell us 
probably was like, I don't want to show up Brogdon. I think that had some kind of, unless Brogdon was going to get a tribute, it would have felt like they were kind of mm-hmm. showing him up. It could have felt that way. <laughs> Banton doesn't it could have felt that way. I, 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 think, I don't think it would have been crazy to do one and not the other. I don't. But I was, who knows? Maybe Rob's just a big, you know, good guy. Like, just doesn't want his friends to be sad. Well, I was wondering if there was any resentment. Nah, I don't think so. I don't know, man. I'm I'm just looking at this picture of him and Jalen, and I just don't think so. Well, not resentment to the players, but like the organization. He looks right? plenty happy. Well, yeah, because he's like the trend. So I'm saying like with Brad or with the organization for trading him like that. I don't know. <clears throat> Interesting. Didn't he talk about weird. the beginning of the season? And he, I mean, he could have given like a fake answer, but he did yeah, seem he very rattled. That. Well, does Rob ever seem anything other than yeah, cool, I'm good. I'm ready to go. Like, I don't know. The way he spoke about it, like kind of like cemented, like he's not mad to me. I feel like I there is, there is a, a pitch here, like up. I, I, you're not watching on YouTube audio platforms, like up here and a pitch right here. And they're really close. And Rob's voice never leaves that pitch. Like he's just monotone. He's always really talking in the same level. Um, So I don't know. It, it's tough for me to, uh, I don't know. It's tough for me to gauge. Anyways, uh, let's do an email check in. Hold uh, up. Jump on over there, but first I'll do the back. Let's go to in pop Nino. We have two entries. A reminder, comment what's popping on the podcast for a chance to win a ten dollar in pop Nino gift card. Time for the wheel. Let's get into it. Uh, also, forgot to do it at the start of the show. Live for salts of the round table tonight as you're listening to this at 6 p.m. Be there. Mm. All right, wheel time. We've got Zachary Nugent and Nino Brown. Who's it going to be? In the wheelchair. Who's it going to be? 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 It is. Zach. <clears throat> Shout out. Congratulations. Um, make sure to email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com with your name and phone number. We'll get you hooked up with a $10 in Pop Nito gift card. Again, HBTC. Or, wait. A, yeah. HBTCpod at gmail.com. <clears throat> email us there. All right. Let's go to the email here. First one from RJ. Uh, I'll go to this background so you can see it. Oh, wait. Hold, please. Only hold, one. Hold, hold. There it is. Okay. RJ says, <clears throat> what's popping? Talk about a fun run. Evening, guys. This has been such a fun stretch of sports for me, watching the Celtics win out, quote, meaningless games, and getting to do the playback alongside Ben DuPont Friday night. The main Celtics have entering to the G League Championship Series against the OKC Blues. Sorry, guys. That's a little far for me to cover the ga- road games for HGBTC. <laughs> You're forgiven. Uh, and my Purdue Boiler- Boilermaker is getting to the men's national championship game on Monday night. No, I won't offer a prediction. I'll just enjoy the game. And the Cubs even contributed to the fun by taking two of three from the Dodgers. <clears throat> w. And now I'm on vacation for a week, which might be enough time to figure out what the heck is going on with the rest of the Eastern Conference. Good Since the NBA, <laughs> yeah, this is great. Since the NBA has Monday off, the standings will still be valid on Tuesday morning. Uh, the Bucks are in free fall and have the hardest remaining schedule. Could they lose the remaining uh, four games and finish 47 and 35? The Magic could go three and one, losing to the surging Sixers, and wind up at 49 and 33. New York, meanwhile, goes two and two because why not? Wraps at 48 and 34, and Cavs close out two and one, losing to Indiana, finishing it at. 48 and 34. The Pacers sweep the final week and end up at 48 and 34. Sixers also go 3 0 and come in at 47 and 35. And finally, the dreaded Heat could only lose to the Mavs and close at 46 and 36. Once the dust settles, that'll leave the following Mag- or Magic in, t- in second at 49, Pacers in third at 48, Knicks in fourth at 48, Cavs in five at 48. Yes, I checked the tiebreakers. Uh, so this three way tie is correct. Bucks in six at 47, Sixers in seventh at 47, and Heat. At four in eighth at 46. Do I think this is a likely outcome? Not really, but it's one possibility. By the way, the Bucks hold the head to head tiebreaker over both Miami and Philly, so I don't think they can slide all the way into the play in game. That sucks. Weird, huh? Be well, RJ, which is the perfect segue into us talking about the NBA standing. So let's just go right into it, into the NBA section. Pull it up. Um, I'll pull up the we'll background. Do that. But put some talking yeah. points on the sheet today, too, if you want them. Perfect. RJ hit nail on the head. The Eastern Conference is fucking insane. And you know what, shit. Sam? You know what, Sam? Since the Celtics have clinched, kind of rocks. Like, this is just going to be fun to watch. Like, I'm going to entertain it. And I know there is the little bit of, oh, you don't know who they're going to play. Mm-hmm. But even you said it, like, you don't know who they're going to play. So all you can do is just enjoy these teams fucking slugfesting each other. Because at the end of the day, you're going to play one of these fuckers in the play-in. So you might as well be prepared to beat them all. And you know what? Realistically, knock on wood. Putting out the years past uh, in the rearview mirror, 
I'm confident against the Celtics against anybody in the East, realistically. So I, I think take care of business. But anyway, I think it'd be pretty funny if Orlando finished second. <laughs> I it'd just be think really it would. cool. Coming into the really season, cool. if somebody told you that, you would have laughed in their face. And it's still kind of laughable because, I mean, RJ gave us a whole standings like prediction that could happen. And there was not a single other Eastern Conference team that had won 50 games. It would be crazy. Um, the Sixers only have, what is it, three games left. So, yeah, it does look like it's impossible for them to catch the Bucks, which stinks. Um, I did see in the... Um, on Twitter, the Bucks did clinch the playoffs, so that does actually track. But the Bucks have lost four in a row. They're three and seven in the last ten. They suck. Cavs have lost three in a row, three and seven in the last ten. They also suck. Sixers are surging with Embiid back. They've won five in a row. Um, everybody in the East outside of the Pacers, <laughs> excuse me, Pacers, who are seven and three in the last ten, are just kind of mid. And then the Celtics at eight and two, five in a row. Um, RJ explained it beautifully. We're going to have a battle for this three through eight, and I'm I'm very very excited for it. You could see a world where <clears throat> the Cavs fall into the playing tournament. The Magic could fall into play in tournament all the way up there. The Knicks could. Everybody could fall into play in tournament except for the Bucks. And even the yeah. Bucks can fall all the way down to six. Imagine the Bucks go all the way down to six and have to play the Pacers still anyways because the Pacers jumped up to three. They just fucking flip flop. This is gonna be a very, very, very fun final stretch of the season. So I don't really know what I'm rooting for. I think I'm rooting for like matchup stuff with the Celtics, where I would like Milwaukee to be two, three, or six. Because Celtics would not have to play them to the conference finals. I would like Philly not to be in the play in because I just wouldn't really want to have to worry about that being a first round matchup. Not that I even think they would lose. It's just like, do you really want to start the playoffs with a fucking nail biter? Not really. I don't. Um, it would be fun if Indiana fell in the play in to me. Even though they beat the Celtics twice this year, even though I think they're a good team, I'd rather play them than like a healthy Philly. This whole thing is just bizarre to me because the the thing is a sh- fucking shit show. The separation my... between these teams is nothing. This is what I'm cooking up, right? Call me the chef, Chef Harden. Okay, whatever. all right, right. Bucks I'm to get food down. Person. Yeah, no. Bucks. Don't care where they are. I agree with you though. Two, three, six. Prestige. Ideal. Love that. <clears throat> right there. Next, Philly. Also two, three, six. I just want Philly to be also like, don't have to worry about them. Ideally, my dream, Bucks three, Philly six. They play each other first round. So one of them is gone. Yeah. Then and the Celtics don't have to the play Knicks. them. <clears throat> exactly. Yes. And on top of that, give me Cavs, Knicks play in. Okay. Cavs, Knicks play in. Fall all the way down. Celtics get one of those two teams. Don't care which one. One of those two teams. Right. Go up there. Scratch that. Changing everything. Bucks stay two. I- I'm cooking on the fly here. Can you tell? Bucks All stay right. two. Give me Sixers in three, mm. if that's possible. I don't know if it is. Heat in six. Celtics don't play any of them till the conference <laughs> finals. Right? Okay. It would be the funniest then, thing ever. The Celtics <laughs> had like a huge Mickey Mouse run where they just then, played nobody. <laughs> per- it's great. And then give me Knicks Cavs in the play-in. Give me Pacers magic out of it. Don't care who wins from then on out. Just give the Celtics an injured Dicks team or a Cavs team that kind of sucks. Um, don't care who they play after that. Just just those three teams, two, three, six, prime. Love that. Would be great. See me cook there. You saw me cook there, right? What a Come week on. this is gonna be. What a week. Tell me I didn't cook. What a week. Tell what me a week. I didn't Celtics cook. play the Knicks on Thursday. They they have they have a they have a piece of this, Jack. They do. So in that world, we want them to win because we want the Knicks to fall. So we want Celtics win every game, or they lose tomorrow. Who are they playing with? The Bucks. Yeah. Um, we kind of want them to lose tomorrow. In my world, it's okay. Go ahead. However, up. pride sake and fun sake would be super funny to see the Bucks lose again. Just, just objectively. Funny. Just like objectively. dock at the podium again. <laughs> also, looking at the screen here, look at the fucking ridiculous point differential difference between Celtics and. Everybody else in the Eastern Conference, <laughs> like the Knicks, uh, Knicks actually kind of impressive at four point five plus four point five. Everyone else is below three, and the Celtics are at eleven point six, which is fucking insane. And then everybody, we can talk about the West too. Everybody in the West, uh, one through eleven, has a positive point differential, which is crazy. Um, but speaking of the Western Conference, we can go there quickly. 
Uh, Timberwolves and Nuggets top of the West tied at 54 and 24. Thunder one game back 53 and 25. The Clippers are pretty much secured in fourth and take a, a lot of winning and or losing from uh, Clippers and Mavs. Uh, Mavs have sort of solidified themselves as a playoff team. It, they still have time to lose out of it, but they are like they have a nice little breathing gap there. Two games ahead of the next team there. They're nine and one in their last 10. Lucas making his quote MVP surge, um, which if, I guess you're wrong, but he's not, not going to fucking win it. <clears throat> um, I sorry. Sun, all I fucking saw was a big circle jerk about him having his knees bleed. Did you see that? No. Yeah, they were like he he got like a block at the end of the overtime against Houston. Then it was like, yeah, he his both his knees were bleeding. Sick. Play, he played defense. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, that was the best part. Like he's like screaming after the block, and they asked Ime. They were like, "What? What did he say? Did like did he say anything to you guys?" He's like, "I don't know, dude. I don't speak Slovenian." But like he. He doesn't play defense at all. He's going to let everyone know when he does. Yeah, respect. <laughs> Suns uh, and Pelicans tied at 46-32, eight games back. Suns and six, Pels and seven. Kings and Lakers fighting it out. Warriors have clinched a playing spot. Rockets have been eliminated. They're done so. Yep. Sorry, Rockets. All the all the 20 teams are set. It's just where, where are they going to be? Yep, and no one fucking knows where they're going to be is the answer. No one has any idea. <laughs> As we're recording this, I'm heated. There's no NBA tonight. <laughs> yeah, because it's getting fun now for I'm us. We don't like, care I, about anything also, else. not for nothing. Fuck the West Coast, dude. Sorry, RJ, but this game is at nine twenty tonight. Know, UConn. Dude. Both these teams. That's crazy. Indiana's not Central Time, is it? Even if they are, <laughs> no, it's outrageous. It's not. <clears throat> it's crazy. Eastern Time. Go fuck yourself. You want you want Western t- Pacific Time? You have a team that's good. If this was like USC versus Baylor, sure. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what I mean. Your team's playing, yeah. you get the time. If not, fuck off. Yeah, not a fan. Out on it. Um the really- speaking of teams that can fuck off though, uh Sam, you put on here teams on Wot Watch. Please enlighten yes. me. Yes. So I saw Stat Muse put out today. This season's Washington Wizards team will have the worst ever, worst of all time record for a single season for the franchise. So this is the worst ever Wizards team. (laughs) That's an impressive feat considering. Yes. So then what did I do? I said, let's look at some of the other terrible teams. Let's see what it's going to take for them to be the woat of their franchise. So (laughs) our Pistons, in order for them not to be the woat, they have to win three out of their final four. Oh, they're to avoid being the worst. And that would only be to tie the woat. So they they're would still fucked. technically be the woat, but they would not be alone in being the woat. They would be tied with themselves last year. Oh, no. And then the San Antonio Spurs. No, the 80 what? Pistons. Mm. Oh, it's the 80 Pistons. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The San Antonio Spurs. What <laughs> does it mean... <laughs> For Wemby's legacy, if he's part of the Wote Spurs team. The Spurs who have to win two more games to avoid tying for the Wote and only need one more to just tie. Just be tied for the Wote if they win one That's more. actually very possible because Spurs have been playing really well lately. Yeah. Like they have won. Well, they heard about being the Wote. <clears throat> I know. They've won three of their, or four of their last uh, seven. Uh, and they are playing... Memphis, OKC, Denver, Detroit. So Memphis and Detroit, they should be able to go. Uh, and they just got in a close game with Denver recently. So they've they've got a chance. Dude, I'm sorry. I know I'm g- taking us off track. Did you see Wemby's stat line the other night? No. Dude, they lost Pull to the Sixers in OT. So it Mickey was like, Mouse, I don't it's care. tough. And Embiid didn't play. Bomb. In OT. Scrub merchant. Uh, well, Maxi put up 52. Um, but Another this scrub man, merchant. Nothing this game man went in Yama. He, they won. It's not a nothing game for Philly. <laughs> what the fuck? That was not at all a nothing. nothing game they were playing Philly. as a nothing team, is what I mean. Did not right now. They were like Spurs had won like three of their last. Four. They're in the woke conversation, Jack. They can't be that great. It, but they, <laughs> Wemby has been that great though. Wemby in this game against the Sixers had uh, <laughs> thirty-three points, eighteen rebounds, six assists, and seven blocks. This man is flirting with, well, I guess six assists isn't that close, but he's like kind of teasing quad doubles a lot lately. (laughs) He is, dude. This guy's insane. Dude, and it's not even like, 
shot 11 to 20. He had nine turnovers, so it wasn't that great because he's like still figuring out how to handle the ball. But like you watch some of these blocks Wemby has and you're just like, like we're fucked, right? Like, look at this. These are all Wemby's blocks in this game. <clears throat> Not my confidence. He's just dude. like, exactly. Just like, look at some of this shit. She's like making them look like children. Like this Poor is, Zingas this better. Is, that's what I was gonna say. If you took Nerf hoop and just was like defense, like I saw Sam Quinn of CBS Sports tweet out today. He's like, it's defensive player of the year, but Wembenyama is the best defender in the NBA right now. And like I read it and I was like, that's kind of crazy. And then I thought about it. I'm like, nah, he's he's probably the best defender in the NBA right now. You know what's kind of good though? Like if you're playing in the NBA and you get blocked by Wemby, it probably doesn't even feel that bad. Like it's not like if you get blocked mm-hmm. by like. Dude. No offense, but Derek White, like yeah. Wemby, is unbelievable. I'm sorry, freakish. Like he's supposed to block you, Paul Reed. What are you trying to do here, brother? Paul Reed is taking a mid range shot with Wemby. Like, come on, man, he'd <laughs> be better. That's crazy. Be better. That's that's a crazy block, to be honest. <laughs> it is. Like, Wemby's I don't think you're seeing many players in the league make that block from like a standstill. Dude, Wemby is he's a freak, man. He is. Like, it's hard for me to, like, fathom just how ridiculous Wembenyama is. Like, look at that defense. This is like, he's playing Derek White defense, except he's a foot and a half taller than Derek White. Like, he's, or I guess exactly one foot. Look at him guard. Dude. These chase down blocks are insane. I'd like, be like, heated if I had to play against Wemby. When Minyama chase down has to be one of the scariest things ever. Like you just feel his presence like breathing down. Like he's just no, he doesn't even have to be breathing down your neck. He can be like socially distanced and still block you. It's crazy, dude. All right. Um, next thing, Sam, would you like to make fun of Trey young? I know that's what you have on here. Oh uh, yes. Kind of Trey young made it through. He's back. Uh, <laughs> according to Woj, Trey young has been cleared to resume contact and return to practice for the Hawks ahead of the play in. Bless up. Thought he'd never play again, to be honest with you. Hmm. I know the surgery was very tough. Glad he made it through. Uh, Also on here, Cat. Expect to be back before playoffs. This is good for the Wolves. uh, Not San Antonio. Sheesh. Minnesota has been okay without Cat, but they aren't at the same level that they've been with him, which was top of the Western Conference type stuff. Good for them. Wolves fans probably breathing a sigh of relief because this was a really good season for them. I think we talked about this on Saturday's pod. Like, do we really think they're going to be very good for a long time going forward? Probably not. So this is probably their best crack at making a deep playoff run. And Cat is going to be a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Now, Sam, I know we disagree on Trey Young. And unfortunately, I have a stat that I mean, supports you. disagree. Team. I think he's good and you don't. <laughs> oh, you think he – I didn't know he, you thought he could. He's good. You're an idiot. He is good. He's a good offensive player. He's terrible on defense. But he is, like, a very, very, very good offensive player um, in terms of – I'd like, uh, yeah, I was going to say what you do in there um, in terms of his like, play making, play and I want it back. his offensive creation, his like ability to organize an offense like in San Antonio, he'd be elite because when is there to help make up for his defensive flaws and he'd be able to set up when better than anybody like one of the best in the league. However, the Hawks are 14 and 13 without him this season. It's the Zach mm. bump. So it's tough. It's a tough. One. Mm. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, good for good for them. Um, good for Trey Young. He's back. Good. The Timberwolves thing I think is more important because like getting not only Cat coming back, but him coming back before the playoffs. I saw Keith Smith tweet about this and like being able to ramp up before the playoffs. Yes. Start, like that's really big. That's really kind of like what we were saying when we thought Holiday was having his arm amputated. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, unfortunately. Some guy who might not be ready for the playoffs. Anthony Davis hurt again. Same. I didn't even see this. So you're breaking the news to me. All right. So Anthony Davis has uh, turned back into Mr. Glass. Anthony Davis, who has been very healthy this season. He hasn't missed much time at all. He left oh. Sunday's loss to the Timberwolves with an eye injury and didn't return. McMenamin of ESPN. I think it's Dave McMenamin. Tweeted this. Mm-hmm. Anthony Davis is being treated for an eye injury that he previously needed to receive medical attention for after a loss to the Warriors. A source familiar with the situation told ESPN. So the man p- tried to play through it and then got hit again. Idiot. If I was a Lakers oh. fan, I'd be rattled. I know they still <laughs> kind of have stuff to be. Well, I'd be rattled anyway, but I think they still have stuff to be like playing for. So it makes sense yeah. why they are like being like, okay, go ahead, go out there and play. But at the same time, like, 
if if the Celtics played Porzingis through something and then he re-aggravated it, I would be mad as hell. Dave McMenamin also tweeted that there's optimism he will return to lineup tomorrow or today as you're listening to this. So it does sound like he'll Probably be okay. Six shades um, on. Yeah, but uh, Dave, Dave McMenamin, who's un- unbelievably lucky. Yes, go look it up for yourself. Um, <laughs> another thing, we didn't even put this on the sheet. We saw this last night. Maybe the weirdest way to phrase an injury designation I've seen. Chris Metal did. You see what he was out with listed as? No. What is this? He was, they listed him as out during the game due to, quote, mouth trauma. Would you like to guess? So <laughs> I have to make the joke like, yeah, of he kind of always looks like he has had mouth trauma. <laughs> sure. Yep. It, I mean, it was up there. I had to throw down the lob. It was just yeah. too easy. I'm sorry. Uh, he apparently got a tooth knocked out. Really? Uh, during a play. Yeah, apparently. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying Sounds to find like a play. Sounds like some bitch shit. Isaiah played through it. I know. I'm trying to find the play. Um, Middleton doesn't have that dog in him like Isaiah did. I don't know if this was... this. Is, I think this was the play, but you can't even see like the tooth flying out. So I, I call Cap, but here's the play if you're watching on YouTube. <clears throat> apparently, um, mm. they're playing the, the Knicks here. And oh, where is he? Okay. Dr. DiVincenzo just kind of rakes him in the face. That was it. Like he just raked him in the face. I don't know how that happened or like that literally just coming down. Like, yeah. I don't know how that knocked his tooth out. You know what I'm saying? That's weird. Yeah, that's that's kind of bizarre. I wonder if he already had a loose tooth. He did get yeah. banged in the back. I he's, what hurt probably hurt more. Fairy. Look at this forearm he looked like he was about to take from Isaiah Hardenstein. Isaiah Hardenstein's a big motherfucker. That probably hurt more than the mouth trauma. But anyways. Um Sorry, Chris That's Milton. I was really mean to yeah. you there, but it was just, it had to be done. Sorry, Chris Milton. Anyways, Rattless time. Sam, kick us off if you'd like to. Uh, where would I like to start? Rattless my neck. I don't know why the fuck my neck is hurting like really bad today in the front. Like my two muscles like right here are really tired as if I like did chin-ups, but with my neck. Like it feels like I try to do sit-ups with my neck. I'm sore this morning. I don't know why. I mean, I did, I did like sit ups, but not with my neck. It's very. I odd. feel, yeah. Usually, like when I get a sore neck, it's like here, like in the like side to the back, not in the front. <clears throat> Unbelievably bizarre. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ratless trucks. No, mm. it's given. Uh, first of all, I found. You know how the other day I said like I found a truck with like learn how to drive a truck on the side i found the place yes. where they learn to drive trucks like the lot like it's a big fucking lot these should be a you should have like just wrote them a letter i know i should have fucking told i should have done like cow tipping with all the trucks like crash into it um i was going down a street and so the street is like i don't have a stop sign but this the, these guys merging onto my street have a stop sign where they have to stop and wait and then merge on with me it's not like a full like t t-bone but it's like makes a y do you know what i'm saying like the y shape yes and so i'm coming down along <clears throat> yeah i'm coming down the long and this truck speeds up to get in after their stop sign. And I have to like slam oh, on my brakes. No. And then they just go like the speed limit. I'm like, you did all that. That's horrible. Like, wh- what are we doing? Like, for what? When, when I was in college, like I was in a creative writing class and we had to like write a dialogue. So I basically wrote an episode of Seinfeld as if two of the characters are driving a car and the driver elects to let somebody go ahead of them. And the amount of trust that you have to put into that driver. And then if they fuck you over, it's really bad. Yep. That happened to you. We got up to the next light and I just passed him in the other lane. Like, if I can you catch you in look? that time, no, he's too high up. He's in a truck. I, just, I couldn't. It was a big truck. Couldn't see big him. boy, did you? Big, I, I literally just couldn't see him because I was on his right. And he's <laughs> okay. in a truck. I okay. couldn't see him that high. But yeah, ratless trucks. And then another one cut in front of me further down the road, just pulling out. I'm like, it's not my day. Uh, ratless, my mom. So this one's kind of funny. My mom likes to skate ice skate like like rollerblade or, or i was skateboard. yeah no, no i, I had to like, clarify what the fuck? not skateboarding <laughs> but ball. uh so I'm, I'm really happy like my mom has recently like started to skate again she goes to the ice rink every once in a while like weekday mornings i think they have open skate we have an ice rink in our town so she went in and she went over the other day and she came home and i was like how was it she was like they had all these kids in there like the hockey kids 
She's like, I need to, I'm going to one of those city council meetings to tell them that they need to have these kids get higher grades if they're going to play sports. So she, she's mad that she couldn't use the rink. So she's going to go in there and try and require less kids to be able to play sports out of spite. Actually, like, is she actually going to do it? Ah, uh, she probably won't actually go, but no, she, that's... she was like, I think they need to start making them get their grades up. They're all in there so early in the morning. How can they be doing good in school? And I was Jeez. like, what time? Did she I go? don't think you're actually concerned about the grades. You just, you just want to skate want the by yourself. What time did she go? Uh, probably like eight, nine a.m. Okay. Wait, how are they in there? Isn't that? School it might be hours? school vacation. I don't know, dude. <clears throat> that is weird. Um, they, everybody was out and about today. I yeah. like there were people playing basketball down the street from my house like all day. Huh. That is very odd. Uh, Rattless jury duty. So I, I had jury duty today. And you go and have you ever had jury duty? I have been summoned, but then they canceled it. Okay. So what happened? I didn't even have get to go. In... Yeah. So you get in the room and they give you like your juror number. And mm-hmm. the way it works when you, everyone goes into the jury. First of all, it took them like till three hours to just let us in the room to like select the jury. The way it works is they call you up by your number. Go, go, go. And I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure like you, they ask you a bunch of questions like partial, it's impartial. And they say, like, are you, et cetera. They call you up to the bench one by one. So, like, jury number one, jury number two, three, four. They call you up, and then the judge says, like, yes or no, like, to allowing it. And then the, both, like, each lawyer on both sides, they get two vetoes where they have to, like, have cause for it. So, like, I don't like this person because I think they're biased, et cetera. And they have to, like, plead their case, and the jury, and the judge can be like, okay, yes or no, et cetera. You literally ha- should have just bought a MAGA hat and wore it, and you would have been out. And they get one veto for... Just because like they can just veto anybody they want because so I get in there. They give my jury number. There's like 37 numbers and so they go in order. And if they get to a certain point and then like they fill the jury, they're done. Right. So if you have like 37, you're you're good. You're pumped. I'm number four. Oh, no. I'm tough. Right? Number four. <clears throat> go up there. I tried my best. I played the parents divorce card. I'm like, I'm bringing out all the stops I could possibly have to be like, red flag don't choose me don't choose me i'm like uh, i did i did this in this i know a cop i know people i'm like playing everything they go sit them down i'm like no <laughs> they sit me in the jurors table and then the chair next to me the 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 lawyer started vetoing they said juror this you're free juror this you're free i'm like please like please me next i want to go home. <laughs> did not go home i'm not gonna like talk about the case or anything but i am like getting there jury duty just i'm in there i'm just in I, i'm i'm on the case and i have to go back tomorrow as you're listening to this today and the judge starts she's like hopefully we can get it all in today and then she goes at like 3 45 she stands up and she goes earlier today i made a promise that i don't usually make and i regretfully have to take it back because we're oh, not no. today i'm just like oh come on man this, this guy i work a- with he's he he was on jury duty for mad long yeah if it goes he was past, there for like months. Yeah, if it goes past three days, they have to pay you. So I really hope I don't want I don't need the money that bad. I don't think they pay they pay you like dick though. They don't pay you anything. I don't know, man. It's, that's it. It's tough. It sucks. Dude. I'm not not looking forward to when I ever whenever I have to do that. It's not great. I gotta have like something ready to go. Like maybe I have like a Confederate flag vest or something. <laughs> Uh, rat list is rap beef. Uh, so I'm sick and tired of going on Twitter and seeing people talk about rap beef. I guess Jay Cole made a diss track on oh. Kendrick Lamar <laughs> and yeah. then apologized for it. So I had well, Kendrick to read made all one this first. shit. Okay. Yeah. Well, Kendrick made one, then Jay Cole made one. Yes. And then everybody was tweeting about it for mad long. So I had to see it. And then Jay Cole apologized. So he was like, yeah, I regret this, but you had to read all the tweets anyway. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't get rap beef. I, I don't know. I, well, someone can educate timeline. me in the comments, please. There's people, like, in the same circles as basketball talking about the rap beef, too. I guess. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Um, so I don't really have a... This isn't, like, ratless, ratless, but it's, like, um fun story, and this is the only place I have to tell it. <clears throat> so I'm at jury duty, right? <clears throat> and I get selected, and I'm on the panel, right? Whatever. I'm in now. <clears throat> it is what it is. I've accepted my fate. Um, they do like opening statement or whatever, and they let us go to lunch because it's 1 p.m. at this point. 
We go to lunch. Mm. There's nothing around, so we just have to go to the gas station. But we're walking out. <clears throat> I'm like making friends with the fellow jurors because, like, the fuck else am I going to do? You just talk to people. It is what it is. Uh, <clears throat> get in the elevator. I'm like, what do you do? I tell them, oh, I cover the Celtics, etc. They're like, oh, that's cool. Like, most people, like, it's like fine. Um, <clears throat> one person said I work for the city. One person said she was a nurse. Uh, this guy says, <clears throat> oh, I'm a teacher. We get outside and you go, oh, so where do you teach? He goes, Oliver Ames. I'm like, Wait, that's where, I, that's where I went to high school. What the fuck? And he goes, I go, what is your name? He goes, Mr. Holland. I go, you're my fucking gym teacher. I was just in jury duty with my gym teacher. And he's like, what's your last name? I'm like, Simone. I'm like, Jack. And he goes, yeah, I think I had you. And we're like, we're just talking, like catching up because like, I, I never thought like this. Is, it's one of those things where like, I never thought I'd see this fucking dude again. Like, Correct. Yeah. My gym teacher, for, like my freshman year of high school. Um, and he had Henry too. We didn't have Grace, but like I, I, I were getting food or like we just had to go to like a gas station. There was no places like open around us. <clears throat> um, that sucks. But yeah, it is whatever. I had some chips. I'm hungry though. I'm gonna eat after this because I've been eating today. I had like two packs of these like peanut butter crackers uh, and chips. But anyways, we're coming out of the gas station. He goes, you know, now that you're like I'm talking to you, I recognize your voice. You were fucking tiny though. <laughs> he's just goes, yeah. you were so he's like yeah, yeah. I recognize you because you're all now I'm like yeah lucky very lucky uh but yeah i just i just spent the day like <laughs> talking to my old gym teacher and during it. it's kind of cool it was it made yeah. it like a more enjoyable experience because it's like holy shit this is just fun as hell and it's a good story now because shout out mr holland man he's a beast he's a great guy he's just super nice like it was cool it's great <laughs> it's very weird and we were that walking like <clears throat> there was this other guy uh named nick we were talking to he's just another like kid on jury he's a nice guy he's like our age uh or a little bit younger he's 22 i think but He's like, oh, what's your name? I'm like, Jack, Nick. And he asked Mr. Holland his name. And I'm like, I don't think I know your fucking first name, man. What is your name? Because I just know him as like Mr. Holland. He's my teacher, right? And so it's just, it's a fun day, man. It's just, it was like, what the fuck? And then, what's your first name? Well, I didn't know, man. I just yeah. knew him as my teacher. So yeah, that's shout out. I just had jury duty with my high school trip teacher from eight years ago. <laughs> Very funny. Um... I'm just gonna do this one. You don't have anything else, do you? Uh, the last thing is this. If guy, you do, did... I can alternate. Not we. We can go back. <laughs> no, and this is this is very quick. The guy got jury duty with. Uh, he found a place that was open. And he's like, oh, it said pizza on the front, but it was like they did Jamaican food, and so I got, <laughs> I got <laughs> curried goat. And I was like, so your first time having fucking goat is during jury duty in Taunton, Massachusetts. And he goes, yeah, it was a tough, it was a bold choice, but it was pretty good. And then we're walking to the back to the jury room and he goes, I really hope that doesn't come back to bite me. I have to oh, shit yeah. myself. In the middle. And he made it through, but it was just like your first time having fucking goat is at a random ass place in the middle of Massachusetts during jury duty. It's just a bold choice by this guy, but everyone was nice. I like it wasn't as bad as I thought because like it just like everyone was like I made friends and uh yeah. Everybody's miserable together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was whatever. Uh Rattlers the Eclipse. So if if you were anywhere today. <laughs> All anybody talked about with this was this fucking eclipse. Except a jury duty. We didn't see shit. Yeah. We saw it on the way out, but yeah. there was nothing to see. Like, if you now I'll say this. You may not be listening to us in New England, but if you're like from New England, it wasn't like a total eclipse or anything. It wasn't like dark outside. You didn't see it though? I guess if you didn't have the glasses, you couldn't see it. But like if you had glasses, called. you could see it. No, but if you get glasses, like you could see it. Like if you what, had these what do I things. care? The only no, way the cool. only way an eclipse is cool is if it makes it dark in the middle of the day. That's it. Other than that, who gives a fuck? It was dark like, in certain places, so it wasn't here. But yeah, no, certain places you get a pass. Like I did see clips on Twitter of it like being like pitch black in the middle of the day. I was like, okay, that's yeah. kind of cool. But like here, you had all these fucking respectfully morons at the beach, just like they are all sitting there looking at the sun. You got they have nothing going on. on? I don't know. I, I wasn't that close to them. I assume they did. Well, I, I the only reason I know, and I, I understand that I agree with you, it is like people make too big of a deal of it. It's like cool that it only happens every once in a while, and like it's cool for like a two second thing, but like calm the fuck down. Um, we were leaving the jury duty pl- or courtroom, jury duty place, leaving mm-hmm. the courtroom. Security guard at the front has the glasses, and he was staring up at the sun. And we're like, "Oh, can we see?" Because he had an extra pair. And we looked at it, and like, it is cool if you look at it. But the difference is, it's cool for like three seconds, and then you move on with your fucking day. Like it, that is all it is. It is you look up, you see the sun has like a ring around it when you put the glasses, or not a ring around it, but like you can see the crescent moon over the yes. sun for two seconds, and then 
if I left the courtroom. I uh, said, "Oh, cool. Here you look now." And that story like, would have been way better like, if he was just like, "No, you can't." <laughs> like my glasses. Well, he had an extra pair, so I'm not he kept fucking it. sharing. You get your grubby hands off of my movie theater glasses right now. I did fuck with Cam though, because Cam tweeted about the eclipse. He tweeted like this informational, like uh Yeah, he was he called out the Celtics. He was like, Don't then, spread misinformation. And it was like And then I, I I actually thought Luke Cornett was gonna block the eclipse for me so I could look <laughs> at it. I really did. Um but thank thank goodness I know now. Cam tweeted uh like the, the article of like, Oh, this is what to do if there is an eclipse. And I just um I replied to him and I said uh I'm just fucking loading. You, you're not the boss of me. If I want to damage my eyes, I'm gonna. <laughs> and he just said, Jack, you got new glasses. What's why well, mess with things now? And I said, pure fun. If I want to fuck up my eyes, Cam, you let me do it. You fuck. Don't tell my me what to do. My favorite storyline from today is Worldwide Wob tweeted. He was like, he just tagged the Suns Twitter and was like, you guys did nothing with this. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> they did nothing the Sun with it. a Twitter? No, the Phoenix Suns. Oh, oh, oh. I you they were like, you guys missed. He was like, you guys missed the best opportunity for engagement. You did nothing. That is pretty fucking stupid. That is that is like a terrible missed opportunity by Phoenix. Somebody should get fired respectfully. Yeah. Agree. Anyways, that's all I got. You got anything else? No, that's it. That's it. All right. We can uh, wrap up there. Thank you all for I hope somebody's in. really mad in the comments. Like they were really excited about the eclipse. <laughs> That's like you're an asshole if you went and looked at the eclipse. You'll get used to it. We're miserable. Um, thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate it very much. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the How About Themselves YouTube channel. Uh, if you're listening on podcast platforms, follow us there. Leave us five stars. Leave us a review. Comment on the YouTube. What's popping for a chance to win a ten dollar in Papino gift card? And use code CLNS on Prize Picks for deposit matching. I'll let Sam wrap it up. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. And round watching, table. Round and table. I'll get there. Prick. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily uploads. We're coming at you with something new every day at 5 a.m. These pods drop Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. We're live for Talk and Seas Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And like Jack said... Cells at the round table Tuesday, 6 p.m. Around there, we'll be live with the Celtics Avengers. You don't want to miss it. It's a ton of fun. We're also live a half hour before every single game, which we're going to have like a mega stream tomorrow because we're doing uh, Cells at the round table, then pregame. So we're going to bleed like right into it. We might have some Celtic Avengers stick around for pregame. So it'll be a good time. You can also find us on Spotify and Apple. If you want the audio versions of the pods and game recaps, give us a follow. They'll be right in your feed when they drop. Leave a five-star review. We would appreciate it. You can reach out to us via email. HBTCpod at gmail.com is the way to do that. We're taking your emails on the Celtics, on the rat list, on whatever. It doesn't matter. Reach out if you're interested. You can find us on socials at How About Them Seas. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook is just the name of the pod. Our streams are there. They're on YouTube and they are on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's Mon NBA. Mine is at Sam the France NBA. It's a pro.